yesterday morning They let me know you were gone I walked out this morning And I wrote down this song I just can't remember who to send it to I've seen fire and I've seen rain But I always thought that I'd see you again Won't you look down upon me, Jesus You gotta help me make a stand And I won't make it any other way Oh, I've seen fire and I've seen rain I've seen sunny days that I thought would never end Well, there's hours of time on the telephone line To talk about things to come Sweet dreams and flying machines And pieces on the ground Oh, I've seen fire and I've seen rain I've seen lonely times when I could not find a friend but I always thought that I'd see you, baby, one more time again now. Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. And thank you to those of you who have supported my channel by liking and subscribing. Your support allows me to continue to bring you fountain pen reviews as I'm unsponsored on this channel, so thanks. Today's pen is a birthday surprise gift for a close friend and neighbor of ours. So, this is on the down low, the QT, and very hush hush. You heard it here first. Off the record, on the QT, and very hush hush. This video will self destruct after you viewed it. This tape will self destruct in five seconds. Good luck, Jim. So don't forget to like and subscribe before it blows up. Our longtime friend Susie has the most amazing handwriting. Every time she sends a birthday or a Christmas card, I marvel at her incredible penmanship. So I suggested to Wynn that we get Susie a fountain pen for her birthday this year. I found this beautiful Admoc A08 in white cracked ice acrylic with gold trim and a fine Schmidt nib on eBay, and I got it for her. And of course, I want to review the pen before we give it to her. And I'm glad I did because I had to make some needed adjustments to the pen before it's gift wrapped. So join me in the unboxing and evaluation of this secret gift pen, right? But you have to promise not to say anything to Susie. Now. <laughs> And it's yet another NPD, New Pen Day. Only this is two new pens, and neither of them are for me. One is a late Valentine's Day present for my wife, and one is an early birthday present for a neighbor. So let's see what's in this Chinese packet. One box, and let's look at the Admoc now. Not sure what model this even is, but this is a, a flip box in the style of Pen BBS with the magnetic flap. That's interesting. And this is a very pretty pen, I thought, in the picture. Sort of a cracked ice style with gold trim. And I really liked that uh, wavy kind of clip. I'm sure they're going to be charged with copying Peniter and it has a Schmidt a number five size nib and her birthday is coming up here in March but we'll clean this pen out put it through its paces make sure it writes properly and then we'll gift it to my friend Susie uh, go ahead play that uh, Susie song well you start and I'll find you a key if you knew Susie like we know Susie oh 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 what a gal and what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. 
After the writing sample, please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. This is the second Admoc branded fountain pen I've reviewed. I still don't know much about the brand other than the fact that this blue Admoc is a direct copy of the Moonman M100. I guess turnabout is fair play. This model is called the Admoc A08 and comes in five acrylic finishes. They are very similar to some pen BBS finishes like Autumn, Silence, Galaxy, and Snow. The design of the cap and the clip are unique and I've yet to find any other pen that has this look. The cap seems to be in shape anyway, um, similar to the cap on the Cross Peerless, but the clip isn't even close. The acrylic doesn't have nearly the depth or chatoyance that pen BBS acrylics have by comparison. Here's the Admoc in blue and you see it has some chatoyance to it but here is a pen bbs 308 in galaxy and you can see there's a lot more depth to it and here is the cracked ice white admoc against a leonardo uh, what you would call a swirling it's not cracked ice but it certainly is a very very chatoyant three-dimensional uh, acrylic compared to this rather flat uh, white. So the Admoc acrylics are just a bit flat to my eye, but the white cracked ice here against this gold trim is very eye-catching. From the top we see a very unique clip and cap finial that are one piece and fixed to the top of the torpedo shaped acrylic cap. The clip is a double tapering band of gold metal that has a lovely S curve to it uh, with the final curl at the tip that makes it very easy to clip to a shirt pocket or to uh, uh, into a pen sleeve. It has a good amount of flex to it. It is vaguely reminiscent of the Penider feather clip. The cap tapers up quickly forming this bullet shape to the top of the cap and then the entire pen tapers from that point all the way down to the rounded end of the barrel. Um, at the end of the cap there is a wide tapering gold metal band with two wide channels and Admoc in block letters stamped into it. There's a very small step down to the barrel which tapers to about here and then tapers with a slightly sharper angle towards the end of the barrel. The cap unscrews with exactly one and two turns to reveal a good length tapering section of the same cracked ice acrylic which has a small lip towards the nib and a gold metal ring separating the section from the barrel. The nib is a number five size steel Schmidt nib and plastic feed. The nib and feed are in a nib collar that unscrews easily to be replaced as we shall see in a moment. Let's look closer at this nib. It is a very pretty Schmidt nib with lots of border filigree and a script F for fine inside a circle and a square and some more scroll work. Uh, there is no breather hole on this fine nib. And then we have Schmidt Iridium Point. The section unscrews to reveal a standard international converter and a gold metal nozzle on the end of the section, which also forms the gold ring that separates the section from the barrel. It will also take standard international cartridges but will not accept a second cartridge piggybacked. The inside of the cap shows a step milled into the acrylic which meets up with the top of the section to seal the nib. You can also see the lovely translucency of this acrylic. And a word of caution about these white acrylics. As you can see from my Leonardo Ferrari salt, these uh, white and clear acrylics can tend to get stained uh, with the ink. It can be removed if you're careful. Uh, I tend to fill my white pans with a syringe now rather than dipping the sections into the ink. The cap posts deeply and securely and makes the pen very very nice in the hand. That double tapering barrel allows that cap to post so nicely and deeply and that's good because unposted 
at least for me uh, this pen is too short posted it is very comfortable and not back weighted at all I bought this pen on eBay for $30.39 US which is including shipping now let's look at some size comparisons and here we are with the Admoc A08 white with a Leonardo Furore salt a pen BBS 308 in white and gold a pen BBS 480 in cedar and a pilot metropolitan now let's look at them posted and here they are posted the Admoc and the Metropolitan are both number five size nibs whereas the Leonardo and the two pen BBS pens are both number six now we'll look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample and we're back with the writing portion of the review this is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper and this is the Admoc A08 in white with a fine steel nib let's check the wetness it is nicely wet so here is an image of how this pen wrote out of the box it was sharp and scratchy it did write and was decently wet but when I checked the alignment of the tines to find where the scratch was coming from I discovered this here's a close-up photo of the nib slit that was cut off center so even after trying to align the tines as best I could and working on the nib with micromesh from 8,000 grit to 12,000 grit I couldn't get the nib to write smoothly it wrote but not without an unpleasant scratch you can see here how the one tine is very small on the one side and the other tine is very large uh, so there was no way this pen was going to write properly fortunately I had the exact same nib in my other Admoc the blue one that looks like the moon man m100 the nib units are identical they unscrew and they were very easy to swap so I swapped them now when I did the review of this blue Admoc I had noted how the nib wasn't spectacular and needed some smoothing work but I wasn't thrilled enough with this fountain pen to continue writing with it so I uninked it and put it in storage now it is in this white Admoc it writes okay but I decided since this was a gift to make the nib as smooth as I could for Susie here are some of the writing results first with the second Schmidt nib and nothing done to it other than what I did last year and second after I'd worked on the nib for about 30 minutes it now writes very nicely as we shall see right now in the ink today is Hiroshizuku Konpeki one of my very favorite inks but I will clean this pen out before I give it to Susie um, and I bought her some Graf von Faber-Castell Gulf Blue cartridges to go with her pen now usually I show my swatch of the color with a couple of other close matches but I'm going to try something new here and point you to a marvelous new ink matching resource from Chris Sands Chris has a terrific YouTube pen channel and she is a real ink guru she has gotten together with two colleagues and created a website which is called inkswatch.com I urge you to take a look and use it if you are at all interested in inks I'll put the link in the description as well as a link to uh, uh, Chris's YouTube channel I searched for Con Pecky on her site and came up with these close matches two of which I was going to show here there's the J Urban Kyanite du Nepal and the Robert Oster soda pop blue along with these others so instead of showing my limited collection of inks I'm going to show screen captures of my searches instead and point you to Chris's website 
I've asked her for permission to do this, but I haven't heard back from her yet. If I don't get permission, I'll just cut this section out of the video. And then I'll just put a link in my description uh, to the search that I did for the similar inks. As to line variation, well, this is a very stiff nib. This is no pressure. That's a little bit of pressure, but you're not going to get any line variation much out of this pen because you're going to have to push it pretty hard. This line, according to my Richard Binder chart, is uh, 0.4 millimeters in thickness, which makes it a Western extra fine and a Japanese fine. And for our quote, And for some reverse writing, it's very, very scratchy and it's digging into the paper. And some quick writing. no issues of flow whatsoever so what do i like and what do i not like about this fountain pen well i was surprised by how much i like this pen the pen mind you not the nib the first ad mock i had didn't thrill me the pen or the nib but this pen looks beautiful is wonderful in the hand posts nicely and is elegant to look at with its swooping feather-like clip and tapering lines. I like that we'll take standard international cartridges. It isn't a pen that I would select for myself, but I think Susie with her charming penchant for glitz, sparkle, bling, and gold will love it. I can't wait for her to have it in her hand and I will charge you with the responsibility of giving me a writing sample which I can share with all of you. She will have this pen in her hands before she sees this video so I can speak to some of the negatives about this pen without raining on her birthday parade. First, the nib. What is it about Schmidt nibs? They seem to add price to every pen they are attached to, but they drag the performance of the nib down. I'd rather have a Moon Man or a Jin Hao Chinese nib than a German Schmidt any day. It's just a piece of, well, you know, True, I've only experienced three or four Schmidt nibs, but they were all Schmidt, uh, they were all bad. And the original one on this pen looks like it was cut by an asshole. Sorry, sir. Doing my best. Who is he? He's an asshole, sir. I know that. What's his name? That is his name, sir. Asshole. Major asshole. How many assholes we got on this ship, anyhow? Yo! I knew it. I'm surrounded by assholes. Keep firing, assholes! Come on. They can't even cut them straight? They must be putting something weird in the schnapps there in St. George in Germany. Ich bin froh, dass alles wieder normal ist. Tut mir leid wegen deinem Auto, Joe. Es ist in Ordnung. It took a lot of work, but I got the Schmidt from the blue Admock to write nicely for Susie. But that work would have added another 30 to $50 to the price tag on this pen if it had to go to a Nibmeister. As to the pen itself, the acrylic is a little dull in comparison to other Chinese pens like Moon Man and Pen BBS. So they may look like they're the same acrylics, but they aren't. And for what you're getting, the price is a bit steep. But that price included the upcharge on the German nib, of course. It'd be worth it if the nib were a Yovo or a Bach, but not for the Schmidt, which is a steaming pile of... Schmitter. Like the rest of them. Until but that's about it. I'm sure Susie will love this pen. Happy birthday, my friend. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say...
Thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.